Don't worry, you're in the hands of a master storyteller. America has produced only three classic writers, Mark Twain, J.D. Salinger, and me. I'm Jonathan Flynn. Everything I write is a masterpiece. And soon, very soon, I shall be known. This isn't my father's story. Well, it is, but he's not telling it. I am. The book is beautifully written. The bones of it were so magnetic to me, what I wanted to do with film. What makes you want to work with the homeless? I don't know. Uh, I guess I just want a job that, uh, you know, means something. The movie is based on a book I wrote called Another Bullshit Night in Suck City. It's a memoir. I worked in a homeless shelter in my 20s. After I'd been there for three years, my father, who I didn't know, I ended up becoming a guest uh, resident of the shelter. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. So you're employed here now? Yes, I'm employed here. I knew that it was a, a book that was written from a very, very good place. Life is gathering material. Help me remember that. Don't worry, let me bring a goddamn pen up here. Can't you do anything about that? No. A lot of what the movie's about is, are we destined to be our parents? And how do we break out from that? And it is about reconnecting with our past. I worked on the script for over seven years and did 30 drafts, and it was like working a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> so it was something of a shock when I actually did get to make it, and I'm very lucky in that the version that I got to make was not a watered-down one. You! You are nothing! You are nothing! It turned out that Nick Lynn, who I play, lives about three blocks from me in Brooklyn. I went to my bookstore to buy the book, and the people at the bookstore said, oh, no, no, wait, we have a different copy for you. And they brought me on a copy, and he had, like, a note written in it, and I was really spooked. I really asked Nick to disrupt his life when we were shooting, because for Bob and me, Paul Dano, uh, it was incredibly important to have him around to talk about details of things and to make sure that a particular room or set looked correct. And that particular action wasn't out of the realm of what the character might be doing. So it was great to have that kind of collaboration. Who votes to let Jonathan continue to stay here? It's freezing outside. We can't put him out there. Nick. We've gotten very lucky with the cast of this movie. When I heard that Robert De Niro was interested in playing his part, it seemed perfect to me because he certainly has menace. He's also very noble, but also this humor too, like this strange, dark humor. I'm a sought after house guest, you know why? No. Because I am an excellent raconteur. It was really funny actually going down with him to meet Nick's dad. At some point, Nick's dad said to him, so you think you can do this? You can play this part? And Nick said, dad, dad, he was uh, the godfather and uh, Raging Bull, uh, I hear you're pretty good. You think you can you, think you can play this? Do I detect a touch of hostility? It seemed every day we would see the performance he's doing and it's just like reaching these emotional depths that are spectacular. You are me, I made you! You are me! I am not you! I am not you! I've been following Paul's performances for quite a while because I was so struck by his sort of intelligence and weird intensity. What day isn't fucked up? Right. He has a great vibe as Nick. I really saw him do some things which blew me away. For the part of Nick, we have to kind of go into him in a way. We have to sort of see things through him. And Paul has that openness. My mom's dead, and my dad I haven't heard from in 18 years. He passed forged checks. I don't know that I ever want to see him again. He was a good collaborator in terms of understanding story points and sometimes challenging me on story points or saying, I don't understand this. Why is the character doing this? And at the same time, if it's coming from a place of love for the storytelling, I'm very happy to be challenged on things. That was my first wife, Jody. I know who it is. She was my mother. Paul was terrific. He's making it his own. And, and the thing about Nick, as with Paul White, they both understand that if you take the things that are working, that you can make your own, that that person, me in my case, and Paul Dano in his case, make that work for themselves in the best way possible. Maybe the question isn't why she killed herself when she did, but why she chose to stick around as long as she did. I love Paul Weitz. I think he's got a great literary sense, which I enjoy. I'm with you. That, that, that's totally cool. Well, maybe just, just a tiny bit more heat on it. I think that he captures the essence of the book so beautifully. Of course, writers, especially poets, are particularly prone to madness. This was a more personal movie to him. This was something that his vision, which I wanted to help him realize. So whatever he wanted to do, I would support. What I wanted to do with the film was have the music done by just one artist. And the experience of working with Ali Drum Boy on About a Boy really stuck with me. Take my hand, walk with me. 
It's a much more collaborative experience too when you're actually working on the songs with somebody. I had Damon do Bach-esque versions of his themes that would adhere to Bob's character, who considers himself a classic writer, and then sort of songs be more representative of what Aldano's character is going through. Do you think I'm my father? I think you need to get some help. With someone like Nick and Paul's sensibility and creative direction, it, it becomes terrific. I don't care how good a writer you are, you can't kill someone with words. If you look at the x-ray of the movie and the x-ray of the book and its essential emotional elements, I would say it's the same thing. It's really a father-son story about sort of reconnection. And that's a really universal theme. This is an excellent opportunity for you and I to make up for lost time. Destiny has brought us together for one fleeting moment. Let's not spit in its eye.